Praise the Lord Jesus, everyone. This is your Bible teacher, Elder Richard Campbell, coming to you one more time in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with another Bible study. I pray that the hand of God, amen, has been good to you. I believe that the hand of God has been good to you. And I pray that you have been kept in perfect peace as your mind is stayed upon the Lord. I'm here to bring you another segment of the study that we had started. I have made up my mind. And we're coming from the book of James chapter 1 where I will pick up from where we left off the last time we were here, amen, and we will continue with the 13 doctrinal lessons that James shows to us between chapter 1 and chapter 2 of his book. So let's pick up from where we left off. Last time we were speaking about the purpose of testing and we were sharing about the trying of your faith. Uh, today I want to take us into another doctrinal lesson that James brought out when we, amen, when he um, wrote this book. And so let us read from James chapter 1 and looking from verse 9, amen, we will go down, all the way down to verse 12. And it says, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withered the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let us pray. Father and eternal God, we thank you for this opportunity today to study your word, to share your word. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to minister to those who will be watching this Bible study presentation. Lord, I pray for grace, to bring forth the word, Lord, with clarity and with the anointing of God. I pray for the grace of God upon those who will be watching, those who will be listening, that the power of God will rest upon them, Lord God, that the glory of God will be seen in their lives and that their lives will be impacted and empowered, will be lifted and strengthened and that, Lord God, we will overcome the wicked one through Jesus Christ the Lord we pray. Amen. Now let's go right into the Word of God. The second doctrinal lesson that James brought out is the test of humility. And when we consider what he says, we see a few things coming out of what James tried to bring out. Let me just get these notes out. And, 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 and what he says is, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. He starts out by showing us the trying of our faith. But then he goes into speaking about the brother of low degree should rejoice in that he is 
exalted. So he turns our attention to two categories of people, the rich and the poor. And James wants us to understand that exaltation from a low degree to a high degree or rank is a test of humility and piety or godliness. He is bringing out in continuing on this uh, subject concerning the scattered Christians who were Jewish at the time, he continues to show us that testing is not only of our faith, but there is also a test of humility. So he says, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. If we turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, we will see here that he speaks of something. Likewise, he says, ye younger submit unto the elder. Yea, all of you be sub Jet one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So in verse 6 he says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I believe James wanted to bring out something similar to what Peter brought out, that suffering is not limited to only those who are poor, but suffering also extends to those who are rich. Likewise, trials are not just for those who are poor, but trials also come to those who are rich. And so Peter would have us to understand that we should be clothed with humility, whether rich or poor. We should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us in due time, casting all our cares upon him, for he careth for us. You see, the truth is that cares do not discriminate. Cares come to the rich and cares come to the poor. What James then is bringing out is that humility is not on account of being poor or of low degree. Humility has nothing to do with poverty or riches. Humility is a state of mind. It is not really speaking to the circumstances of life. And the, the mistake that many of us have made is that if you are poor, you're humble, and if you're rich, you're proud. Poverty has nothing to do with humility, and humility has nothing to do with poverty, because there are many rich people who are humble, and there are many poor people who are proud. That might surprise somebody. So James takes us to, uh, in, 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 into an argument to help us understand and appreciate some things. And the first thing he, he brings us to appreciate is that exaltation from a low degree 
to a high degree is a test of humility and godliness. The second thing is, and I'm going to share them point for point, is that the rejoicing that he speaks about is not in the exalting or the exaltation, but the rejoicing is really in what the exaltation accomplishes. And what the exaltation accomplishes is a trial of our character and attitude. He's not saying rejoice in the exaltation, but rejoice in what the exaltation brings. Because it proves what kind of a person we are, what sorts of attitudes we have in this exaltation. The third thing um, he, he, he points out, and uh, I, I'm going to go through them as I said one by one, a person may bear poverty or prosperity. A person may bear poverty. Another person may bear prosperity. But a transition or a sudden change from either one brings challenges to the mind of the believer. What am I saying? Is that when a person is poor and has to bear being poor, he may find a way to bear it. A person who is rich and has to bear being rich will find a way to bear it. But the problem comes if somebody who is poor suddenly becomes rich or if a person who is rich suddenly becomes poor in the transition or the sudden change or the sudden transition you find that people, amen, do not handle the sudden shift very well. Because the person who was poor, being shifted now into a place of riches, might become tempted or become tempted to change his behavior, which reveal his true character, his true personality, who he really is because of his riches. You see, the, 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 the situation is a trial or a testing to see if this man who was in a circumstance of poverty, amen, will change his behavior now that he is rich. Or if a person who was rich and suddenly loses everything and becomes poor, amen, or would be lacking or destitute, change their mindset or their position. You see, the testing comes, amen, through the change or the sudden shift. And so that's where many of us have the problem. That you, you were healthy today and you could praise God and you could do all the wonderful things in your health. But when you, if you become sick suddenly, can you still praise God or stick with God being sick now? Or were you just praising him or serving him because you were healthy? And so, what James is saying and what I'm saying today is that, amen, many of us change behavior and change character when the situations in our lives change. And so, amen, uh, that, that is the reason why, amen, the, 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 the test is administered by God to prove whether you are who you really say you are. Amen. And so it goes on. Amen. The, the, the fourth thing is that a Christian 
will be tested by such a transition and this will settle the point of genuine faith and commitment to God. A test must come to test to see if you are genuine in your commitment to the Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the, 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 the number five, the humble should well rejoice that he is exalted to the dignity of a child of God. Let me get a little bit more light here. Amen. To the dignity of a child of God and not to allow their poverty to depress them into forgetting about their spiritual elevation in God. Let me say that again. What James is bringing out here is that the humble should well rejoice that he is exalted to the dignity of a child of God and not to allow his poverty to depress him into forgetting about his exaltation in Christ. Amen. Not, not, not number six. Poverty and wealth both have their own trials. And therefore, the believer in Christ, whether rich or poor, is guarded by his relationship of faith in Jesus Christ. So that whether you're rich or poor, they learn to abide in the same spirit and character of Jesus Christ. Poverty and wealth have their trials. It doesn't matter if you're poor, you're going to have trials. If you're rich, you're going to have trials. And so what James is bringing out here is that it's not about being rich or poor. It's not about having this world's good. It's about where our relationship is anchored. And so I want to take us to where Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 12. If you could turn with me briefly to where Paul says, here is what Paul says, I know both how to uh, be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to be to abound and to suffer need and then he says in verse 30 i can do all things he wasn't talking about everything and anything he was talking about the extremities that life can push our way i can do all things through christ which strengthened me. It is not my money that strengthened me. It's not my wealth that strengthened me. It is not my relationship with influential people that strengthened me. It is not my 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 poverty uh, that that strengthened me. Where where I say, oh, I'm poor, and uh, Amen. God knows that I'm poor, and uh, and so because I'm poor, Amen. I I I I take um pride in the fact that I am poor and humble. He's not taking, amen, he's not having confidence in poverty and he's not having confidence in riches. He's having confidence in Christ because whether he is hungry or whether he is full, he is saying that I am strengthened or I am upheld by Jesus Christ, by my relationship with Jesus Christ. That is where my faith is. That is where my strength is. And so uh, uh, let me bring uh, uh, the seventh thing to us. And he said, the rich should rejoice. He turns to the rich now and he says, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. The rich should rejoice in that he is brought to the humiliation of a sinner, that he may bow at the cross of Jesus Christ to receive salvation. I want you to see that. Remember when Jesus 
was speaking of this young man in St. Matthew chapter 19. Let's turn there. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 23. Jesus said, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. He makes this point also in St. Mark chapter 10, because what he is saying is that because those who are rich trust in riches, it becomes hard for them to trust in anything else. It becomes hard for them to trust in anyone because they trust in their riches. And so Jesus is saying that it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom because of where his trust is. And so James is pointing out that the rich who are believers, amen, should rejoice because that is what he's saying. Just as he said, let the brother of low degree rejoice. He's saying the rich should also rejoice. But what should they rejoice in? They should rejoice in that they are made low. The rich should rejoice because he has found himself humbled to the point where he can receive salvation for his soul. There are many rich who will not be saved because they don't want to be associated with those who are poor. They don't believe that those who are poor should have the same common salvation as they do. Oh, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. And so, amen, the rich, number eight, is reminded that vain is the trust of riches for as the flower fades from the grass so the rich and his riches do fade eventually and so here we understand the test of humility but then i want to bring to you the third doctrinal lesson that james points out and this is Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. You see, he is still, James, he is still on the same subject as it relates to the suffering of the believers who were scattered abroad. And so he brings us now to the test of endurance. Because the test of endurance, amen, is where we understand that we have to abide under circumstances that are trying, circumstances that we did not bring on ourselves, but we have to abide under it. You see, believers, we have to understand that there are some situations that are going to come in our lives that we want God to remove right away. But this is a test. I'm going through a test right now that I have to be enduring. I want to see it move. I want to see it go. I've been saying, Lord, how long is this going to be going on? I've been dealing with it. We have been dealing with it. My family and I, we have been dealing with it for, for years and we, we, we want it to go away. But there is something called a test of endurance. And the word of God says that there is a blessing for the man or woman of God who endures. I want you to realize that we are not left alone to endure. Because where we get the ability to endure from is God. He is the source. But the Lord said, blessed 
are happy. That's what the word says. Happy is the man that endureth or abideth under temptation. This is not temptation to sin. These are circumstances of life that comes upon everyone, rich or poor, influential or not influential. It doesn't matter, man or woman. This comes on every believer. But God is saying, Bless is the man that endure or abide under and he's saying for when he is tried or when he is proven that means when he proves that he can go through the temptation he can endure the temptation there is a promise here given the promise is a crown of life which the lord had promised to those or them that love him there are two things coming out of this verse here that defines the blessedness of the man that endure temptation amen and the first thing is that there is a promise to that man there is a promise to you there is a promise to me when we endure the circumstances that we go under when God gives us a word and says he is taking us through he's not giving us more than we can bear but he is faithful and he will bring us through allowing us to be able to bear amen what we go through as he said to Paul in Romans he said he would not give us more than we can bear amen there is no temptation that has taken you amen that is in common to all men but God who is faithful will with the temptation make a way to escape so that you and I can be able to bear it he is saying that there is a crown of life promised amen to them who endure temptation amen and this temptation also proves that we love God there are two things here the crown of life that is promised and there is uh, proving that we love God and it takes me back when uh, Hebrews 11 tells us about Moses when he was come to years of accountability when he come to years where he could understand he chose rather to suffer affliction he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter he chose rather to suffer affliction oh my god hallelujah to god hallelujah somebody is suffering affliction right now because of your choosing god moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of god with the people of israel rather than to enjoy the pleasures of Egypt which were for a season they were the pleasures of sin and because you have chosen to suffer affliction with the, the people of God because you have chosen God you are suffering affliction but there is a promise of a crown of life and there is amen a revealing that you love God that you prefer to suffer in God than to prosper in the world world hallelujah to God and I'm saying to somebody right now because of the promise of eternal life because of the promise of a crown of life amen it is better to suffer with that hope of eternal life in God than to enjoy the prosperity of sin and the world which only lasts for a time which is only temporary amen here James says there is a test of endurance because the endurance test prove that you love God and the endurance test amen brings a promise of a crown of life amen hallelujah I want to say to somebody today amen that there is a promise of your street amen let us turn to James chapter 5 amen and uh, verse 10 and 11 and see what it says here James 5 verse 10 and 11 says take my brethren the prophets who have spoken spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience amen affliction and of patience glory to God behold we count them happy which 
endure. Glory to God. I believe God gives the grace to endure. Hallelujah. No matter what we go through, we're going to go through tests, brethren. Whether you have a good job or not, whether you have a good house or not, whether you drive amen, a Benz or a Rolls Royce, it doesn't matter if you drive a good car or you drive a not so good car. Amen. It doesn't matter if you live in your own home or you live in a rented home. It doesn't matter if you wear the most expensive clothes. It doesn't matter if your clothes ain't all that. Amen. You are going to suffer a affliction and you are going to have to be patient as long as you're a child of God. Remember Job, he says, ye have heard of the patience of Job. Job was the richest man in the east in his days. Amen. And Job lost everything. Amen. But his life. Amen. Job lost everything. Hallelujah. He had sores on him. I don't think any of us, amen, can say we have been through what Job have been through. Amen. Hallelujah. But Job lost everything his wife told him, amen, to curse God and die. He lost his 10 children. He lost servants. Amen. His friends sat down with him for three days. Amen. For, without saying, for seven days, without saying a word to him, he had sores all over his body. But the Bible said that you have heard of the patience, the endurance of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Amen. The situation that befell Job was not his fault. It was not for any sin. Job did. Amen. But he, amen, was given the grace of God to endure it. Amen. The patience didn't come from Job. The patience came from God. God gave him that enduring grace that he could endure. Amen. That situation. He remained the same character. It tells me and it tells you that Job's character didn't come from what he had. It came from his relationship with his God. And I want to say to somebody today, no matter what you're blessed with, amen, no matter what you feel you don't have, amen, have a relationship with God because we are going to be tested. We are going to be tried. My, my, but it's only a relationship with God that is going to keep us whether we're rich or poor. That's what's going to make us endure and prove that we love God and bring us into eternal glory with God. Amen. It said that we see the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Job's end was more than the beginning. He was more blessed at the end than the beginning. Hallelujah. And Job lived a hundred and forty years after that. Amen. Full of age, full of days. Hallelujah. And he died a man blessed of God, not because of his riches, not because of what he didn't have, but because his relation was in God. He was able to endure. Amen. Uh, let's turn to uh, one more scripture. First Peter, amen. Uh, chapter 1 and verse 7. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. Uh, I want to take you into that portion of scripture. It says that the trial of your faith. Let, let's read verse 6. It says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold. It means layers of temptations. That, this is the purpose for the layers of temptation. Hallelujah to God. This is the purpose for my layers of temptation. This is the purpose for your layers of temptation. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish it might be found unto the praise and honor and glory 
at the appearing of Jesus Christ. If you don't go through any trial of your faith, there can be no praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to have any praise. You're not going to have any honor. You're not going to have any glory when Jesus appears. Oh, hallelujah. My hope is not in this life because if in this life only we have hope in Christ Jesus we are of all men most miserable so then glory to God what we should be doing is praying for God to give us grace to endure these temptations that we might have praise honor and glory when he comes hallelujah Oh, glory. We, we want to get rid of the temptation, but let's not be too hasty. Let's ask God for wisdom, amen, to go through this temptation. Let's ask God for the grace to endure the temptation because there is a promise to him that endure. There is a proving to him that endure that he loves God. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, and we close with that one. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Beloved. Oh, Lord, this one gets me all the while. Think it not strange. Think it not strange. Think it not out of the ordinary. It's a part of our walk with God. It's a part of this life is what is going to qualify us for heaven. Fiery trials. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to prove you, try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice. Hear this word rejoice coming back again. It's hard to rejoice when you're going through rough, tough situations, sad situations, painful situations. But the rejoicing is not in the situation. The rejoicing is what is in what is at the end of the situation. And so while we're going through, we ask God for grace. To rejoice, rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I want to tell somebody today that it is a test of our humility. It is a test of our ability to endure. All of us are enduring. All of us are going through trials. And it makes no sense we say that the rich don't have any pain because they do have pain. They might not have pain in everything, but they have pain in the most difficult places, in the places where it hurts the most. And money can't heal it. But I want to say to you today that you can go through because you're being proven. You're being approved. And it is when you're approved that God, hallelujah, will be able to give you the promise that he has made. Let us pray together right now as we close this study. Father, thank you that there is hope at the end of this tunnel. There is light at the end of our journey. There is strength 
in you, for you strengthen us, Lord, to endure. You strengthen us to endure the test of humility. You strengthen us to endure the test of endurance. Paul said, hallelujah, that he's instructed. Help us to realize that what we go through is an instructing situation. What we're going through is a learning in God's kingdom school. But Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. And so we can say, Lord God, uh, while we're being instructed, hallelujah, we are instructed how to abound. We're being instructed how to be abased. We're instructed how to be full. We're instructed how to live empty. We are instructed, Lord God, how to abound or increase. We're instructed how to suffer need. We are being instructed so that at the end of the day, our circumstances are not our masters. But Lord God Almighty, our master is you. Our situations don't control how we behave and think, don't control our character. But, oh Lord God Almighty, we through the word of God control how we behave in whatever situation. Help us, oh Lord God, to be strengthened now. For there is hope. There is no need to despair. There is no need to be negative. There is no need to doubt or to live in doubt or to live in fear. Or to live in hopelessness. But oh Lord God your word tells us. That there is a promise. And there is a trying. A proving. And an approving. For it proves who love you. It proves who trust you. It proves our confidence in you. And brings us to another level. Bless someone Lord God. Here in this broadcast today. That their faith is lifted. And Lord God, they are emboldened for the challenges. Thank you now, Lord. For we trust in God. In you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Until we meet again. Keep on being decisive. Keep on living with a made-up mind to serve God.